On July 30th, 2016, in Simi Valley, California, my friend Luke Akins made history. He jumped out of an airplane from an altitude of 25,000 feet. Jumping from an airplane to me is not a big deal. I've done it over a thousand times. I spent 20 hours of my life, yes, 20 hours, just falling at 120 miles per hour just like Luke on this picture. I am quite sure some of you must think, this guy is nuts. Well, you're not alone. That's what my wife thinks too. What's remarkable about Luke's skydive compared to all my jumps is that he did it without a parachute. No, he did not die he safely landed in a 100 by 100 foot net. Now you tell me who is nuts. <laughs> it took him two years to carefully prepare for his jump that lasted two minutes and eight seconds. I am sharing this extraordinary story because for many years I have been pondering the following question. Why is it that some companies achieve success and grow year after year after year while others remain stagnant, become irrelevant, or even die. And how is it that companies such as Apple, Nike, or Amazon have been growing so much over decades and became such large iconic businesses? Well, it turns out it's not by accident. They all follow the same rules. They apply the same principles, and they use the same playbook to grow. When I watch Luke's remarkable skydive, I realize that what all those businesses do in common can be captured in one word, alignment. If you think about it, the single most important thing that made the difference between life and death for Luke Akins is that he had to realize and maintain a perfect alignment between his body and the net. I'd like to share with you a secret that very few people know. It's the secret to grow any business. CEOs, business leaders, and entrepreneurs who want to be successful and grow their business face a similar challenge as Luke. They have to realize and maintain a perfect alignment between the business and the target market. The companies that are well aligned with their market are the ones that succeed and flourish. They are the ones that gain a significant advantage over their competitors. Just like Luke fine-tuning his body mid-air, they constantly adapt to market changes in order to preserve and sharpen their alignment. They are the Apples, the Amazons, and the Nikes. So if alignment is critical to succeed and grow, then the question becomes, what do I do on Monday morning at 8 o'clock to align my business in order to grow faster and beat my competitors? What if I could give you a clear answer to that deceptively simple question? That answer will unlock the mystery of growth. Surprisingly, it comes from the fascinating world of timepieces. Indeed, businesses are like mechanical watches. They are complicated, they are sensitive, and they must be resilient in challenging environments. It is quite remarkable, a watch like this works flawlessly for decades. And inside, the mechanical pieces move a lot. For example, if you take this particular gear, it's called the balance wheel. It oscillates 28,800 times per hour. Now, if you take into account all the mechanical pieces that are moving, you can calculate that they move one billion times every two years. Yes, that's billion with a B. That's a lot of movement. There are two key reasons why such a complex mechanism works so well. One is the way the mechanical system is designed, and the other is because of these blue dots. They are called jewel bearings. They are made of sapphires or rubies. 
They were invented in 1704 by two Englishmen who received a patent for their brilliant discovery. True oil bearings are critical to create and maintain a perfect alignment of all the fine gears that are moving between the two plates. Without them, the watch would work for a while, and the mechanism would not keep its alignment, and the watch would slow down and eventually stop ticking. A few years ago, I made a profound discovery that changed the way I think about any business. It was a defining moment. It only took me 24 years in Silicon Valley to figure it out. To understand how this breakthrough came, I need to mention a little about my background. I have a PhD in physics, chaos theory, which gave me a unique appreciation for the relationship between order and disorder. And then I went on and I studied the business and grew it from zero to $350 million in its first year. That helped me understand how alignment drives success. And finally, I became a venture capitalist. I looked at 2,300 companies, and only after seeing that many businesses did I notice some very specific patterns to grow. Those different experiences led me to this extraordinary discovery. I realized that in business, just like in a mechanical watch, they are jewel bearing, so to speak, that are critical to create and maintain a perfect alignment between the business and its target market. In fact, there are eight jewel bearings organized in four pairs or four axes of alignment. And the stunning fact is that those four axes of alignment are universal. They apply to a cafe on the left bank in Paris, a startup in Silicon Valley, a small business in Miami, or a Fortune 500 company headquartered in the heart of Manhattan. Let me tell you a made-up story to illustrate the four axes of alignment between any business and its target market. Imagine, we're in Applewood, it's a small town 17 miles west of Denver. A woman named Sylvia is suffering from a terrible migraine. She goes to see a pharmacist, and mentions the migraines, and he hands her a box of pills that he claims will relieve a stomachache. Surprised, the woman say, I've got a headache, not a stomachache. Obviously, she's not going to buy the pills. This encounter illustrates a misalignment between the problem presented and the solution offered. I call this the first axis of alignment, pain versus claim. The pain that the customer has, or the problem that the customer has, and the claim that the business makes, or the solution that the business is proposing, must be aligned. Now, it turns out that the pharmacist has the right pill for Sylvia. He will cure her in 10 minutes. And he explained this in French. Voilà le médicament qu'il vous faut et qui soulagera votre mal de tête en 10 minutes. Sylvia has never been to France. She never studied French. She cannot understand a single word of it, except perhaps the word voila. <laughs> Even though it's the perfect pill for her, she will not buy it, simply because she does not understand what the pharmacist is talking about. This illustrates the second axis of alignment, perception versus message. The perception that the customer forms about what the product does, and the message, which is the expression of the claim, must be aligned. Now, it turns out that the pharmacist has the right pill, but he tells her, well, there's a very effective medicine for your headache, but you have to drive to Denver to get it, to pick it up. There is no way that Sylvia is going to drive 34 miles round trip, especially since she is standing in a pharmacy right now with her head pounding. Would you buy a product if you had to put in so much effort? That's the third axis of alignment, purchase versus sell. The way customers want to purchase a product and the way that product is sold in the marketplace must be aligned. The less friction, the better. Now, let's examine the last and fourth axis of alignment. I had the good fortune to work at Apple. During the last year I was there, I worked directly for Steve Jobs. Yes, that's how I lost my hair, in case you wondered. I learned many insightful lessons from Steve, but one of them in particular struck me and became the foundation of the fourth axis. 
I came to the realization that there is one and only one business on this entire planet. Everybody is in the exact same business. And that unique business is the manufacturing and delivery of delight. Let me say this again. The manufacturing and delivery of delight. Sylvia finally got the pill, but after she swallowed it, her migraine persisted. She started to feel dizzy, and a rash appeared on her skin. Well, clearly, this is not what she expected. Based on what the pharmacist promised, she thought her headache would be gone in 10 minutes and that she would go on with her daily routine. That's the fourth axis of alignment, which is you know, delight versus offering. The delight the customer expects from a product and the offering of what is delivered to that customer must be aligned. Those are the four universal axes of alignment between any business and its target market. Let me quickly share with you four examples of good alignments, one for each of the four axes. Pain versus claim. Think of Geico and its claim. 15 minutes could save you 15% on car insurance. Simple, yet effective. Geico is one of Warren Buffett's most successful investments, worth around $40 billion today, compared to the $2.3 billion he spent when he bought the company back in 1996. Perception versus message. Well, think of Nike and its powerful message. Just do it. Inspiring athletes and those who dare to push themselves beyond limits they thought they could never reach. Nike's athletic shoe business grew from $900 million in 1988, just when Nike launched the Just Do It campaign, to $9.2 billion 10 years later. Purchase versus sales. Well, think of Amazon and its one-click purchase or the simplicity of Amazon Prime. Amazon grew revenue 99-fold from $5.2 billion in 2002 to $514 billion in 2022. That is more than half a trillion dollars in sales. What extraordinary growth. Delight versus offering. Well, think of Cirque du Soleil, where music and dancing and acrobatic and special effects are masterfully blended to the delight of 180 million spectators in 60 countries. That explains their stunning growth from their humble beginnings in the streets of Quebec to a billion dollar business, global business today on the world stage. Those four examples clearly illuminate the four alignment principles I have been sharing with you today. Remember, I made an audacious promise at the beginning of this talk, which was to share with you the secret to grow any business. The secret is this. If you are selling a product, a service, an idea, anything, and you want to be successful and sell more and grow and prosper, there is only one way. You need to make sure that your business and your target market are well aligned. That means, number one, the claim you make to your customer must align with their pain. Number two, your message must align with your customer's perception and understanding of what you offer. Number three, the way you sell in the marketplace must align with the way your customers want to buy. And number four, what you deliver to your customer must align with the delight they expect. I hope I began to shift your thinking about how to grow a business, any business, regardless of what it does, its sales or its size. In the end, it's not just about connecting the dots. It is really all about aligning the dots. When you leave today, I invite you to share this alignment idea because it's simple yet profound and powerful. Give it away. Share it with a CEO, a business leader, an entrepreneur, an investor, a friend, a family member, anyone. Tell them what to do on Monday morning at 8 o'clock. Help them align their business so that they can grow faster, thrive, and fly past their competitors. Because alignment is the only way to be successful, as Luke Akin so brilliantly demonstrated on that hot summer day in 2016.
Luke is on his own. And the crowd on the ground looking up, they have a visual on him right now. That's the secret to achieve success and growth for any business. Alignment, alignment, <laughs> alignment. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.